doesn't have the great national scope yet, getting set to do battle in game one of the Pete Newell Challenge. And here to tell you about it, courtside, Barry Tompkins and Dan Belwamer. All right, thanks very much, Ted. Well, it is interesting. Bobby Knight yesterday was talking about his friendship with Pete Newell. He said, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of places I can play basketball. I don't have to play in California. He's here because of his respect for Pete Newell, and it's a respect, I think, that we all share. And he's here trying to get a victory because his team right now is a team very much on a bubble. Can go one way or another, had a loss of a player. They got to go get down and do some business. Yeah, they really do. And I really think they're ready to go. I was at their practice, and they're focused, and I think this is a very big game for Indiana. They want to play it in a half court. Of course, USF wants to get it going the full 94. They have a guard by the name of A.J. Guyton. One report actually said he may be the best guard to ever play at Indiana. That takes in some pretty select company. Yeah, that really does. I thought Isaiah, didn't Isaiah Thomas play at Indiana? He was pretty good, as I recall. He was very good, but A.J. Guyton is a tremendous player. The Big Ten freshman of the year, a guy that can score off the dribble, he can shoot it on the outside, and he can make plays. Now, for USF, they have an inside threat in a team ward, and Ward is a guy Indiana will have to deal with on the block. He he can shoot it, he can run it, and he can make the 15-footer. Let's talk about USF for just a moment. You and I talk about tempo all the time. I have to think that USF would have to establish tempo early in this game. I think USF will try to establish tempo, and I think they're going to try to pressure Indiana. Indiana will want to play it in the half court and control it. It's a very pivotal game for early in the season for both teams. Indiana has to establish itself, and USF trying to get that big victory that has been so elusive. We'll be back. Tonight, Game 1 in the new arena in Oakland features Indiana, its first appearance in the state of California in 17 years. And the Hoosiers playing their first game after final exams have a record of 6-3. and three. San Francisco comes in at 7-2. and two. And now for the game, let's go back down courtside to Barry and Dan. All right, thanks very much, Ted. Phil Matthews uh, and the USF Dons, they have beaten the teams they're supposed to beat, and they've lost, quite frankly, to the teams that they were supposed to lose to, although they have been in both games in which they lost, only to uh, fall by the wayside in the second half. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two teams. For the Hoosiers, Patterson, Mandeville, Lewis, Turner, and Guyton. Campbell, Ward, Nice getting a start for Phil Matthews with Thomas and Cobbs. Uh, both teams having to make do uh, without the presence of a very important player, of course, uh, for Bobby Knight. Uh, he and his center parted company. Collier is gone, and uh, he's going to have to make some replacements there, and he will go with Mandeville to start the game. Gives him seven feet, but uh, does not give him the ability of a Collier. And Phil Matthews, in his third year as the head coach here at USF, with a 39-26 and record and off to this team's best start since they renewed the basketball program back in 85, was it? 85-86, and uh, Phil's done an excellent job. And looking forward to this game, uh, obviously a very big game for San Francisco uh, against uh, traditionally a, a very fine uh, Indiana team. So I look for USF to pressure Barry. They're going to go after him 94 feet, and Phil Matthews wants to keep the intensity up where Indiana's going to want to play it more in the half court. they got to get the clock operating before we can start the game. And they finally have it. So we are set to go. Uh, no gimmicky rules in this one. It isn't that just like Pete Newell, not to have any of that quarter stuff. And uh, now they got to reset the shot clock. Oh, we played a second without playing a second. Now we're back to 45 minutes on the game clock and 24 seconds on the shot clock. And uh, here's the fix it, man. Bobby's not thrilled with this, I can tell you right now. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> He's saying, you want to get the clock operating so we can start the game. Actually, he's laughing it up yeah. with Richie Ballesteros. And I think we're ready to go. I think we finally have things uh, the right way. Phil Matthews, I'm sure, is thinking that this is a huge game for his team. You know, it's going to be, you know, if they can get by it, it's obviously a big prestige win for for his program. We're talking about both teams having to make do without an important part of their lineup. Damian Cantrell with mononucleosis uh, just found that out yesterday, and he's going to be down probably at the minimum of weeks and the maximum of, I suppose you could say, the season. This is Zarek Campbell, a leaner in the lane. And Patterson with the rebound. A.J. Guyton. 
Ross Turner, and down low it goes to Patterson, just blew by everybody. Patterson, a tremendous player. Now, a guy that can score in spurts, but occasionally has a tendency to go away. So he has to keep that up. Good motion, good movement, pretty good screen, and a good drive to the goal. He was coming off the bench earlier this year for Bobby Knight and being very effective as a sixth man. Ali Thomas, the freshman. And now Campbell, worked on by Lewis. Drop it down for Nice for the leaner. Won't go, but he draws the foul on Patterson. Of course, Indiana, uh, years and years, traditionally a very good man-to-man -man team. And, and I look for USF, Barry, to switch it up. They're going to go some man, some zone, and they're going to give Indiana different looks. Bobby Knight has to be very happy so far in the early going. Did not have a great practice yesterday. Uh, was very disheartened with the way this club was practicing and uh, didn't know exactly how they would play today without Collier gone. And uh, he felt uh, this was very important to get his team back on track to have a good showing here in the Pete Newell Challenge. Mark Nice gets the first and the second. Nice touch on that free throw for the seven-footer from Durmstadt, Germany. Full court pressure by the Dons. Nice has seven foot at point. <laughs> now, now you got a little mismatch here if you can recognize because Nice is guarding a guy about six two. That's a great job by, by the Hoosiers just to get it inside. And you really have to credit Mike Lewis. I mean, Lewis recognized he's got a seven-foot guy guarding him at half court. And he's saying to himself, you know what? I think I can go by him. So this is just very smart basketball by Michael Lewis, who makes a strong move to the goal and then draws the defense and makes a tremendous little dish here to Rob Turner. And Turner, of course, a junior college guard, has come in to establish himself as a very good inside scorer for Indiana. Hit about three moves on the way to the basket and a long rebound off the hands of knees and into the hands of Mandeville. So the Hoosiers will have an opportunity here to back up field goals. Patterson with the right hand. And knees with a rebound. And Ward really hasn't touched yet. And they have to get a team Ward involved and then they go right to him. See, I mean, Ward's a guy you have to keep involved in the game. Find him, have him touch the ball in your offense. Well, especially now, according to the coaching staff here, he needs to pick up his offense, which he did in the Don's last game with the absence of Cantrell. Michael Lewis and Campbell the rebound. Don's go get it on the boards. And if there's one area where you can see that Indiana has to improve a little bit on is I'm sure they want to make more passes in the offense before the shot is up. They passed it maybe one, two times and got it up. Good motion again by USF. And Ward flashing across the paint for the easy basket. I thought he may have traveled when he first had the ball. Let's see if they can make a few passes. Here's one, two, three. Mandeville turnaround. And the long rebound off to A.J. Guyton nicely. Guyton for three. What a stroke. Nice move, but, but you know, I got to tell you that Lewis, so far, has, has really set up almost every score for Indiana. I mean, his penetration through the defense and set up the three. And of course, Guyton, as we said at the top of the show, can grow it. Cobb for three. Cobbs can shoot that. He's a streaky shooter. When he gets off early, he can really give you a problem. And now they're going to have to come guard him. And if they come out and guard him, it's going to really help the team ward inside. I hadn't thought about it from the NBA three-point line. This is Mandeville. He can face up and turn it behind his screen. Well executed, but not a good finish. Mandeville runs down the long rebound. And not a good screen that time by Ward. Well, Ward's got to screen guys out that are playing near the top of the key, especially when there's a long jumper, because long jumpers result in long rebounds. Turner posting up Campbell. Fall away, blocked by Campbell, but he also got Turner. Second foul early in this game on Zarek Campbell. Don's bench, of course, not as long as it has been, and uh, they cannot afford a lot of early foul trouble. And they will get a substitution in right now as Ime Udoka, Udoka rather, comes into the ball game for will come into the ball game for USF. You see a lot of coaching going on, Barry, during free throw situations as Bob Knight. 
has his guards. He brings them all the way over to the bench, talks to his guards during timeouts, I mean, during free throw situations, just to see if he can impart some knowledge, maybe make some adjustments, maybe call something after the free throw. And that one rattles in for Rob Turner. No, the Don's really spreading it out. I mean, look at their offense all the way out, looking for backdoor cuts, trying to isolate Ward one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they got Udoka, and he got it. That was pretty much the way you draw it out. Chris Patterson ahead of Ward, but Ward hurries back on defense. A good job by the Don's just to retrace their steps and get back and stop the break. To the basket, guided, blocked by knees. Got to get on the ground. And they did. That's <laughs> pretty... Pretty good hustle by Ward. Ward just dove after it. It's going to be Indiana ball, however, so good hustle, but no reward for it. 15-53 remaining first half. USF 11, Indiana 8. We're coming back. Kids graduate. A uh, uh, starter is uh, injured. Uh, a kid gets beaten out. I mean, there's. I don't think there's any set way uh, that you replace a starter. Um, but that's something that I think just is part of coaching. Well, the guy knows from whence he speaks. There's no question about that. USF with the ball. I said it was Indiana's ball after that last play, but in fact, it was the Don's. And in fact, uh, Ward was uh, rewarded for that yes, outstanding, was. outstanding effort. Got a foul down low, and they're going to get a grab on Turner. And the other day at practice, we, we were talking to Bob Knight, and we talked about size and speed, and he said, you know, big guys and having a big team is highly overrated. I mean, because normally size equates to slow. And, and to compete nowadays in college basketball, I mean, the score is going to get up in the 80s, and you need some quickness, you need some guards that can shoot the ball, and you need to handle it in the open court and score in transition. So you look at his club right out there now, and you've got the three guards in the game, and primarily because USF pressuring all over the court, he wants ball handling in the game at this time. Now he's going to give up rebounding for it, but he does pick up quickness and shooting and ball handling. Picked up a travel on knees on that last USF possession. Patterson faces up. And just shot it over the seven foot. Patterson's taking more shots in this game than I saw in a two hour practice. <laughs> he didn't shoot the ball at all in practice, but uh, certainly focused and ready to go tonight. Patterson is a guy that probably is victimized by one of his early games in which he scored 39 points as a freshman in a November game against Duke, as a matter of fact. It's a good team to score. It kind of sets high expectations. Yes, it does. Now, Patterson's been all over the court, both ends of the floor. Lewis, dish to Turner, double scoop, won't go. And Ali Thomas going to get the offensive foul. That's a good play by Lewis again. Well, Lewis doing all those little things. Yeah, he's doing the little things and the big things. I mean, and Michael Lewis has been a real influence in this game with his passing, his ability to penetrate, and now he makes a terrific defensive play on the miss here and the scramble. Now watch Lewis. Lewis just gets in perfect position and establishes himself, and I think an excellent call by the official. Turner, the jumper, won't go and knees the rebound. Well, you would think that Ward, Barry, has a real quickness advantage against Mandeville inside if they can find him. If they can get him the ball off of their motion in their passing game, he should be able to do some damage. Oh, he was there and they missed him. Well, they had him inside. It was just a little bit late. Ali Thomas, the freshman. Now to Cobbs. They'll reset. They don't have much time. Five seconds. Four. They have to recognize. Cobbs drives baseline up with the left hand. No. Ward the follow at the shot clock buzzer, and it's good. All right, great job by the Don just to stay after it, anticipate the miss, and get it back up and in. It's hard to defend this offense. Now, if you look at Indiana, they screen, they roll, they have five guys moving. And Pat Matt Patterson from deep. USF will uh, gladly take that to beat him. If that's going to beat him, they'll take that. There's Ward blocked nicely by Patterson again. Great help by Patterson. I, I really don't think that was goaltending. I, I think he did a nice job to get that on the way up. 
Here's Guyton worked on by the big man. Knees the scoop of the right hand. No knees the rebound. I can tell you this. Too quick. I can tell you that right now. They said too quick on the possession. Not enough touches on the ball. Stepping in front. Guyton. Guyton the race for the basket with Cobbs. Easy. Five for A.J. Guyton. gets in amongst the trees and he's almost lost it. Patterson stepped in front nicely good defense along the baseline by the Hoosier. And it was Lewis. Guess who? Here's Thomas cutting across and he draws the foul from behind on Mandeville. Now give, give USF a salute too. I mean they're running their offense very well. They're, they're putting uh, quite a few passes before people are shooting. They're back cutting. They're screening. All five guys are, are playing well. Uh, and uh, doing a very good job against Indiana. Substitutions for Bobby Knight. The freshman Luke Recker comes into the ball game for the first time. So too does Larry Richardson. Mandeville will sit having picked up his second foul. Marvin Gray comes into the USF lineup. He's a guy who uh, until two days ago was going to redshirt this season. USF shooting it very well. And most of them high percentage shots. Yeah, they've gotten some good shots off their passing and their cutting. They've got easy shots near the goal and been able to, to convert. One thing to get them inside is, is another to finalize and go ahead and get it down. And USF has been able to do that. A clear out for Ward and the fall away from the baseline. Uh, he is active. At about six, six and a half, six, seven. He's already got eight. Drop it down to Richardson. Lost the handle. Good job by Todd, by the Lion Russell in the ball game for the first time. Another USF freshman to keep that alive for me. Well, the one area that, that Bob Knight felt that his team had to improve upon too. He indicated they do not feed the post very well. And, and to run that offense, it is critical to be able to make that pass into the post area so that their guy can score. And he said we have not been able to do that. Ward just faces up, sticks another one right over Richardson. And I would say that's a shot maybe you want to give him. You know, if he's going to go ahead and shoot it out there at 20 feet, let, it, let him have that one, but he's got it going. Now you have to close on him. Record the freshman, highly tottered with the freshman. Mr. Brown, Brown, the state of Indiana, and that is no small honor. They're going to get Marvin Gray leaning on Richardson. Talked about their problems with making that post pass, and uh, one of the problems that Bobby Knight has now is that he doesn't have a real bona fide post player. Jason Kyer was the guy, and now he's gone Mandeville, even though he is a, a seven footer or close to a seven footer, is not a post player in the true sense of the word. USF off quickly, they lead it by 5, 11 17 remaining first half. Race off quickly, 17 to 12. They have set the tempo with this game, something we spoke about earlier, 11 17 remaining and a half. Tuesday on Fox Sports Net, don't miss a behind-the-scenes look inside the NFL. On NFL Total Access, that's followed by Hardcore Football with featured guests Keena Turner, Woody Davis, and Dennis Thurman. It's NFL coverage like no other network. That's NFL Total Access and Hardcore Football Tuesday on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. Well, this guy has uh, lit it up tonight. Five of six, ten points, not bad for Hakeem Ward. It's a pretty good game for most people. I'll say. <laughs> it was Lewis off the screen and the dish to Robinson. Again, a beautiful read by Lewis. That's what happens when you give uh, coaches opportunities to talk to their team coming out of timeouts. Normally, they will run a very solid play and get a high percentage shot. Indiana is going to extend a little bit. I mean, they're going to come out even a little bit more and try to put some pressure on the USF guard. Cobbs, the kick out, Uzoka. Drops it down for Gray. Gray, jump hook. He missed everything. And coming around from behind, Ryan Russell kept it alive for Ward. Boy, what a play by Russell. Ryan Russell, right here from Sacred Heart High School in San Francisco, makes a very nice play with a steal. Staying in it all the way. Well, even going back when you were coaching University of San Francisco, you always used to, I remember you used to tell me you got to get the best local talent. And Phil Matthews has managed to do that. Yes, he has. He's done a nice job uh, with uh, Ali Thomas right here from St. Ignatius and uh, Ryan Russell from Sacred Heart. He had a good recruiting class this year. He recruited some good Bay Area players. 
Rucker missed his first shot attempt, and now the Dons with an opportunity to extend. They lead by five, coming down to the midway point of the first half. Award is an excellent pass or two. I mean, that, that is a beautiful dish. Now, Gray, the guy they're going to redshirt this guy, right? I mean, he, he made a sweet move inside with the left hand. Looks like he's bigger than they, the 6'6 that they list him at, too. Here's Lewis again. Penetration pick. Look at Russell. Get on the ground, Lorian. And the arrow pointing to Indiana, but a big-time defensive play for the freshman Lorian Russell. He's made two. There is no substitute for speed. Can't coach here, Lewis. Can. No, he can't coach speed. And not only does uh, Russell steal it from the backside, I mean, he has a presence of mind to get on the ground after it and cause that possession situation goes to Indiana. And again, the Don shooting it well, but getting high percentage shots. And there's Russell picking him again. Russell, one on one with Wrecker to the right. Oh, no. how did? How do you like that one? The Ryan Russell. Take it strong to the glass and protect with the body. Now I was wondering how he was going to shoot that ball. I mean, he had a guy a lot bigger guarding him and defending him down the floor. And here goes Russell. Now he's thinking, let's see, what am I going to do? I think I'll just jump and protect and slide it up with my right hand. Yeah, no big deal. Not the way you draw it up, but it'll work just fine, although they do tell you to protect with your body. Right? Yes, they do, and there's the defensive play, so Russell can take care of it from both ends of the floor and makes a superb move. Now, a uh, lane violation on USF, so they will not get the third point. One thing Indiana has not done against the USF pressure is get anything easy in the open court in terms of the score. So obviously, if the other team is not scoring off of your press, continue to put it on. Tough shot. Guyton pulled the trigger quickly. Couldn't get it to fall. Charlie Miller fights for it. He can't get it. Dons with an opportunity now to extend to double digits, and they'll back it out here. Well, they got offense. Udoka with the elbow. right up in pretty good position and, and does catch an elbow as uh, Udoka does come around and Richie Ballesteros right on the call. Uh, Hakeem Moore just had a cameo appearance on the bench as you look at the rebounding statistics. Uh, a surprising. I, I, I thought that Indiana could stay with the Dons on the glass. But Hakeem sat next to Phil Matthews for about 30 seconds and Phil looked and said, well, what are you doing here? Let's <laughs> get back in the game. Give me some score. And of course, they added to the lead with the smaller lineup and now it's again a jump ball call and on the tie up it is usf's possession <laughs> usf getting after it defensively well that's been the hallmark of uh, phil matthews teams I and mean, they will get after you as you look at the turnovers <laughs> Bill's teams will uh, play very good man to man they're quick and they will come up and challenge Luke Jimenez in the ballgame now for Indiana. And so too is William Gladness. Gladness gives him a presence. Jason Transfer is just uh, getting his feet wet in Division I ball, but uh, a real prospect. They drop it to Hockey Moore. That's blocked. Richardson got a piece of that. It's going to be Indiana ball. Good defensive job. That's kind of a play that can give your team a real lift. I mean, uh, Indiana prides itself in playing great defense, and uh, Richardson with a good block. And now uh, the Hoosiers with a chance to come up the floor and get something solid in the half court. John's staying with that three guard alignment with Thomas, Russell, and Cobbs all in the game. The Ward high to the glass. And it's been one and out for Indiana. Well, last year the Dons led the Pac 10 Conference in uh, rebounding margin. And they have done extremely well. I said the Pac 10, I mean the West Coast Conference. I beg your pardon. And, and by the way, a conference that's uh, playing very well. I mean, they've had some great non-conference wins. Uh, Gonzaga doing a nice job. Of course, USF here, St. Mary's has got some great wins. So has Pepperdine. Uh, gave Kansas a big run, and Santa Clara's played well. So this conference on the upswing. Whoa! Ward off the baseline with a big finish. Speaking of the upswing, boy, and what a play by Cobbs. Handle the pressure and penetrate with the ball draw the defense and then kick it to the open guy. I mean, that's just well executed by the Dons. 
Pac-10 of the West Coast Conference with five wins against the Pac-10. Lewis blew by Russell that time. I think Russell was looking for a little bit of help, but he didn't find any. Well, we've talked about it. I think the toughest thing to do is guard the ball. And, and if you can't contain the dribbler out in the midcourt area, your team has some big problems. Because all of a sudden, penetration creates opening, especially when you have excellent guard play. So guard the man with the ball and don't let him penetrate by you. Ward again, guarded by Richardson, puts it on the floor, tried to go baseline, got a grab on Richardson. Well, you can see uh, Hakeem Ward playing with so much more confidence than he did a year ago. I mean, he's doing some things now that I've not seen him do. I mean, he's putting it on the ground, he's playing, facing up, making the big shots. He's even calling the 20-second timeout. So like what it. else can you do? So Phil Matthews will talk it over with 6.51 remaining, and his team leading it by 9, 25 to 16. Gate Bridge. Fog coming through. It's unseasonable fog, actually. Foggy season here in San Francisco, usually September, October. Really? That's best of I, my knowledge. I thought I thought it was kind of like about 12 months a year, but not true. 25 to 16, USF leads it. Watch the play with Ford coming off the baseline, and Cobb sees him. Boy, Cobb sure does. And the finish. Ward with 14 points. I want to welcome those of you on Fox Sports Southwest who've been watching the Mavs and the Knicks. We have a 25-16 ball game here. University of San Francisco leading the visitors from Bloomington, Indiana by nine and playing very well. Nothing fluke about it so no, far. No, no. The Dons are playing a very good basketball in the half court. They've run their motion, had some excellent shots, and Hakeem Ward has been uh, nothing short of sensational so far in the first half. 14 points in the ball game so far. Lewis fast hands it away from Cobbs, but shot clock not a factor. 21 seconds. Indiana a little more aggressive defensively, and we've got a foul on Ward away from the ball. Now, illegal screen. Now, that's the one thing you have to be careful. Th this is a foul that Hakeem Ward can ill afford to get. He's too valuable. Set your screens and do not move. If you're moving and there's contact by, by the other team, and if it's a moving screen, the foul is on the, on the guy who's screening. So stay stationary. And it is not unusual for Hakeem Ward to get himself into foul stuff. That's Richardson with the easy J. <laughs> This is Indiana's going to have to come back. I mean, right now it's pressure on the ball, and they're going to have to defend and do a better job of negating anything inside, and that's been very difficult for them. Though. Here's a great play by uh, Jimenez. Jimenez makes a super play, and they don't get anything out of it, but he did make a nice defensive play just to create an opportunity. They are coming out and defending almost to the midcourt line now, Indiana, making USF start its offense a lot deeper than it has. Now this is just working with your hands and staying active. Keep your hands moving. Lewis, uh, ball knocked out of him out of bounds, but Jimenez uh, made a nice play uh, just by moving his hands and being active defensively. Coach's kid knows how to play. His dad is a high school coach in Minnesota. We got a five-second call against USF, and all of a sudden things starting to unravel a little bit for the Dons. That's a Bob Knight uh, rule. He likes that rule. He felt that was the worst thing that the college basketball could have done was take out the five seconds. Well, I, I personally am not in full agreement with that. I, I think but, you're a company of one. In that. Well, I talk to a coach who likes it. Well, I think Roy Williams likes it, too. I think Kansas was an advocate of the five-second count. One thing it does, if you play defense and you're controlling uh, the guy with the ball, he either has to terminate his dribble or uh, you're going to get a five-second call. So uh, it rewards the defensive team. I don't mind the rule as long as you're consistent with it throughout the game. But don't make the call in the last two minutes when you haven't made it the whole game when you've had an opportunity to make it. Powell's calling William Gladness of Indiana. Sixteen foul for Indiana. Each team now with 16 fouls, so both will be in the bonus situations with the next foul. Donnie Wiltshire comes into the USF lineup. This is Wiltshire with the ball. Thomas the freshman. What a game! Thomas, an outside shooter. They've done a nice job uh, taking that away from him, but they haven't done much with this guy. <laughs> I don't know if you can do much with him. He's I'm schooling cool. Richardson pretty good. I mean, he's got the jump hook now, too. 
Here's Guyton coming the other way. And from behind, that's a full takedown. And we got a jump ball call. It's gonna be Indiana's ball. Uh, I can tell you, Bob Knight's not going to be happy with that call. I mean, well, he might have an argument. He might have an argument here. There, there was some definite contact. Well, now you look at the replay. I mean, a pretty good defensive job by Russell again. I mean, Russell is all over the place. I mean, he was one of the quickest guys I've seen. The freshman, Gladness off the baseline. San Francisco playing behind at the post. And if you play behind, you're going to give Indiana some opportunities to make those turnarounds. Wiltshire spots up the three and gets it. Donnie Wiltshire, the L.A. City League. Fremont High in L.A. Been a few players come Yes, there have. There's been a few. Guyton from way downtown. And Richardson controls off of knees, forces it up, and draws the foul. Richardson's had a nice first half coming off the bench. I mean, he's very active inside, got the long arms, and his presence uh, has been known uh, in, in terms of his defense and, and his ability to score. Udoka comes back into the ball game, and so does Cobbs for USF. Ali Thomas leaves, and so does Lorian Russell. And I thought Russell gave Phil Matthews some very good minutes. Uh, Lorian Russell, uh, an outstanding first half with his defense. I mean, he's caused some problems. I mean, he's had two or three steals already and made uh, some nice moves to the goal, so he, he's been a real factor. Richardson comes out, and Luke Recker will come on. Richardson leaves with six points. Had a little trouble on the defensive end, though, containing Akeem Ward. Wiltshire penetrate, dish to Ward. Foul before. They call offense on Wiltshire. Looks like Andre Patterson, though, just stepping in. And, and here's when Indiana does a, a fabulous job. Patterson will step in, and Wiltshire a little bit out of control. You have to go under control in college basketball when you take it to the goal because someone will step in front of you. They drop it down for Gladness with the jump hook, and he got the roll. One area Gladness has had some problems. He's not been able to finish plays, but uh, tonight he's gotten the roll. Nice jump hook again, play behind at the post. You're going to give up that kind of a shot. Now, whether Indiana will knock it down remains to be seen, but they have the last couple of times down the floor. We were talking about Gladness's dedication. He's a guy who uh, he's married. He supported his family by working as a construction worker. He didn't graduate from high school. He got his GED, went to a junior college, and now he's here at Indiana, and everybody talks about his work ethic. Got five seconds on the shot clock, and Wiltshire, a little bit short with a three. Got to stop the ball here. Do not allow penetration. Good job that time by Udoka just to come back and stop guys. Wrecker is left, but he misses badly off the left side. And Ward runs the rebound down. Hey, Wrecker's a little tentative on that shot, and, and I'm not... Even during practice, uh, Barry, he, he didn't, he was not fluid on the outside, Jay, and an opportunity jumper like that, normally that guy's going to put it down. You said Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana, and he's a guy that's used to scoring points, so I, he just needs a little confidence boost. He's a wide-open jumper, and uh, that's one he normally makes. Mr. Basketball is getting talked to sternly by Mr. Coach right at the moment. Well, a reminder that coming up Christmas Eve, we got a whole lot more college hoops. We're going to take it out of the... Hakeem Ward has been a man tonight. Hakeem Ward has been the man. You know, tonight. we talked earlier, uh, Phil Matthews, when he came to USF, brought the better part of his team from Ventura Junior College with him. Hakeem Ward was the main man at Ventura. And, and you've talked about this on numerous occasions. It is not an easy transition coming out of the junior college ranks into Division I basketball. And Ward is just now seemingly starting to get it. Yeah, it's the same point that Bob Knight made. He said that uh, it's very difficult coming from junior college, especially big guys playing on this level. I mean, it just takes time to learn the system. And this year, he's made uh, tremendous strides and playing excellent basketball. I think it's easier for guards. They handle the ball. They can run it in the open court. And they usually make that adjustment a little easier. Cobbs missed the shot, got his own rebound, and banged that too hard. I think he was just surprised that he was able to get that rebound so easily. We'll take a timeout with 2.12 remaining in the half, and San Francisco continues to lead Indiana. It's the Dons 30 and the Hoosiers 24. Coming back to the new arena.
San Francisco leading Indiana by six with 2.12 to go in the first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll visit with Pete Newell. He's 82 years young, but still every summer works with two dozen of the most talented big men in basketball across America. He invites them to the big man camp in Honolulu. He's become a legendary uh, attendance, mandatory attendance session for so many of basketball's great players. And we'll talk with Pete about that at the half. Now back to Barry and Dan. All right, thanks very much, Ted. One of the great guys in sport, not only in basketball, Pete Newell. And, and a pretty good resume. <laughs> yeah, not bad. <laughs> that Olympic team at 60 and the national championship team at 59. And, and the NIT when it really yeah. was something. The one that we really was something, you bet. Patterson gets the pick. And here's Guy. And now the Hoosiers can uh, narrow the gap here. And when you pressure Indiana all over the court, they will try to back cut you, run their motion, and get you to overplay. But USF doing a very nice job. They're staying in great position. But not just good defense. That's just not having anywhere to go with the ball. And Bobby Knight wants a timeout. This will be at 20. You know, as Ted Robinson pointed out there, the last time that Bob Knight recruited junior college players was in 89 when he got Dean Garrett, who won the City College of San Francisco, and a guy by the name of Keith Smart, and they won the national championship. So he doesn't recruit junior college players too often, but uh, when he does, they seem to be very effective players. Now, he's not real thrilled with that last possession, but uh, I'm sure his club will come out now and uh, try to play hard defensively and see if they can create a turnover. Well, Bobby getting into his player's face, but... Uh, his hero, without question, is Pete Newell. And Pete Newell is part and parcel of the reason that he is playing here. Here's what he had to say about Pete Newell. Nobody involved in a game of basketball that has a better grasp than Pete Newell. He has no equal when it comes to total understanding of the game. And I mean that at 82 years old. We were kidding earlier. I want to be like him when I'm 82. I'll tell you that. Well, and, and as you said, he's very contemporary. Ask him about any guy around the country. Just ask him about, a, about somebody. We said, well, you know, there's a seven foot one center named Mike Oliver Candy that plays up at Pacific. He says, yeah, I saw him. He's very smooth. He's very quick. I think he'll be a first rounder. I think he'll go high. He, he was in his big man camp and, uh, and uh, you know, played well for him in the summer. So he knows everybody. Well, and the thing I like about him, too, is that the players out here have respect for him. Everybody has respect for him. All right, USF will man-to-man -man the out-of-bounds, so Indiana's going to try to screen and see if they get a good shot. Again, the guy that takes the ball out-of-bounds many times is the one who ends up with the shot. That was well defended. Oops, hello. Patterson missed it. Took it too hard. Players falling everywhere. Patterson again comes away with it with the left hand. Deflected beautifully by Ward, and here come the dimes. What a play by Ward. Terrific defensive set. I, I know, how did Patterson miss the dunk? He ran right over somebody, no call, let him play, and then Hakeem Ward back with the block. Cobbs the penetration, the dish to Ward, and stepping in front was Gladness, and here come the Hoosiers. Wrecker with the left hand, rolls out, and interference. Basket interference, offensive goaltending, we're going the other way. And I thought a good call. Rector did, did not, uh, was not going to get that roll. And Gladness, the ball is on the rim. It may have gone in. It may have curled and gone in. But uh, Gladness knew that he did interfere with the ball and the official right on the play. So the Dons now likely will play for the last shot. Just about one second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. It would be very wise for them to play with, for the last shot. But you're up six. You've got the ball. Don't make a mistake. Watch a five-second call. Here's where the five-second call could come into play because they're counting right now. Two, now the count's off again, and then it starts. As soon as you dribble, you, you take the original one off, but then you get another five. Bob got ball. They're talking about that five-second hole. So my arm gets tired by the end of the game. Two seconds. you got to pull the trigger right now, and he forced the shot and drew the foul. He jumped right into Lewis, and Lewis fouled him. See, normally they're not going to make that call because you, you're rewarding the defense for making the other team run the shot clock all the way down. There was some contact, and the call comes from across the court. This is an experienced officiating crew that we have here. Richie Ballesteros, Bob Garibaldi, and Terry Chrisman. Real lift for, uh, for the Dons. They got a chance to go up eight at half. Now, we need to point out, too, of course, Don's played at Purdue in the Purdue Classic. 
were ahead at the half, only to have Purdue come back score 62, 62 in the second half. Yeah. In fact, in that game, to my recollection, USF scored the first 13 points of the game. It was 13 to nothing at the start of the game. That's true. But it's not how you start, it's how you end. <laughs> And they didn't end real well. No. Purdue ended very well, and Purdue, of course, a very good basketball team. Well, the Dons off very quickly. We talked about tempo. They have set the tempo in this game. They lead it 32 to 24. Ted Robinson's coming up. Let's find out as we go back to Barry and Dan. Okay, thanks very much, Ted. We start the second half, and USF will have the basketball first. Same lineup that opened the game for USF, but Bobby Knight has made a couple of changes. Yeah, he has. Uh, he's gone to a different starting lineup, and uh, I think what he's doing now, uh, Gladness is playing, Wrecker's playing. Uh, he has taken Turner out of the game, coming back, of course, with Andre Patterson, and uh, still has Michael Lewis and A.J. Guyton in the game. So, going to go a little bit quicker. Knows he has to cause some problems, get some open court play. And uh, obviously, Barry, you can't win the game when you're shooting 27, 28 percent for a half, but USF shooting it in the 60s. A lot of that's born of tenacious defense by USF. It's, it's telling you that Dons are getting better percentage shots, too. And, and But I'll say this, they've been able to make their open outside threes when they've had the opportunity. And I thought their bench played uh, e extremely well. They came out, uh, guys came off the bench, uh, their guard play. Uh, Lorian Russell caused some problems, and uh, bench play critical to the Dons' success in the first half. Ali Thomas. Uh, not very present in the first half block from behind by Gladness, and here come the Hoosiers. It's a nice start for Indiana. Now you have to go ahead and get something productive at the offensive end. And I think uh, Guyton's a guy you have to look to. I mean, he was he was fine at the start. You notice one thing, more touches on the ball. And here's another guy that was good. He had the same thing he did to start the game. He was two out of seven in the first half, and I believe made his first two shots. I think he did. And makes the first one to start the second half. And it's a six-point game. Good steal. Now, see, there's a, there's a little difference. Now you have to finish. Great anticipation. And Ward fouled Gladys on the way to the basket. And that was very close to an intentional foul, too. He almost grabbed all body and no ball. Let's take a look at our halftime stats. Brought to you by 7-Up. And uh, as you said, that 62% shooting for USF to 37 for the Indiana Hoosiers. And the Dons also with a decided rebounding edge. Now, San Francisco turns it over more than Indiana. And that uh, kept the game to an eight-point game at the half. But now... Hoosiers with the first basket in the second half, and with Gladys in line trying to get one out of two. So you have to categorize that as a very good foul. I would say. <laughs> you get a guy in the open court. Gladness has had some problems finishing plays, and uh, that's why it's critical to, to go ahead and dunk those open court transition scores that get fouled, misses the goal, and now misses two free throws. It's good play by Recker. Came right over the top of Nice and got all ball. And it's Indiana ball. I think Indiana's going to be successful in the Big Ten. Record's a key guy. I mean, he has to gain his confidence and, and uh, score, do some things defensively, and be productive at both ends of the floor. They need him to play well. Now they're going to open it up, look for a backdoor cut. This record cut off by Zarek Campbell. Patterson on the floor, trying to get around knees, and knees fouled him. Well, you see Patterson, as a, as a big man, can face, bounce it, and do some things in the open court. Again, more touches on the ball that time by the Hoosiers, and Patterson with his left hand. A lot of young people can learn from that move. He's a right-handed player, but he did not bring the ball back to his right side. He used his left hand while driving to the goal and drew the foul. And he brought it back to his right hand. It would have been blocked. So it is a five-point ball game. I'm still empty here in the second half. I mean, you have a guy that was eight out of ten in the first half, as Hakeem Ward was for USF. Be a good idea to get him the ball. And they tried knees cutting on the baseline, and it's off of knees. It'll be Indiana ball. With Damon Cantrell out with mononucleosis, knees has had to be uh, pressed into service, and, and he's really not a guy that's used to playing a great deal of minutes. Now they're going to substitute, get Gray in there, get a smaller guy. That's actually a pass knees could have handled. 
get a leash in. This time, I think they're going to get Marvin Gray right away. So Gray just comes into the ball game and draws an immediate foul. Yeah, they list Gray at about 6'8". They list Patterson at about 6'8". And they stand next to each other. Patterson's like about three inches uh, tall. Right. So Great. Guiding open. Sticks it. Uh, Guiding like that, Jay. I mean, you can tell when, when a guy shoots and bounces on the floor after he lets it go, it felt good. Well, Indiana rejuvenated now. Oh, why not? I mean, they've, they're doing it at both ends. And Gladden has been a big part of it. He's out defending Ward. He got a steal one time. He's much quicker and, and negated anything inside the Ward. And Lewis knocks now. it out of bounds. USF will inbound. I'm not sure USF's had a shot in the second half. Well, we'll get our stat people on it. Yes, they have had one shot. Zarek Campbell, short. And Wrecker in the right place. Well, it's been a good start for the Hoosiers. Might be a timeout if they, if they, if they score here. Time. Akeem Ward just grabbed the ball as Patterson made his move to the basket, knocked it out of bounds. I'm sure it was a spirited halftime talk in the, in I would the imagine. Indiana locker room. Yeah, they may need a time. I think the Dons need a 20 right now, right? Right now. I mean, Indiana has come on and put a blitz on San Francisco. And it's a one-point game, and Phil Matthews is going to try to settle down the troops here. Bobby Knight, right at the moment, just needs to say, uh, do what you've been doing. Yeah, it's been 7-0 here to start the second half for Indiana, and they've really done it with their defense. Some steals uh, in the open court, and their offense has been very good. They've passed, they've screened, they've moved, and they've made the open jumper. Well, we're there when you're looking for the stories, all the sports inside and out. Fox Sports News primetime tonight after the game. Bobby Knight, primetime here in the Bay Area. And Indiana on a 7-0 run. And the team board really hasn't touched it inside yet. No time he's handled the ball is near the top of the key. Well, Ryan Russell took the extra step. See, here's what's unfolding. Indiana's pressuring so well on the perimeter that the only thing that the Dons have open are dribble drives. And all of a sudden, you're having guys do things out of the pattern that they're not used to doing. And consequently, they're making turnovers. And, and Indiana's just taken away that guard to forward pass and forced USF to go one-on-one. -on -one. It really has not worked. More touches. Can you notice that? How, how many more touches is that? How many more is that than in the first half? Much different. And Guyton coming off a pick that time just knocks it down. He's got 12, and the Hoosiers have the lead. See that guard to forward pass, guidance right on it. Did not allow the ball to be reversed to the other side of the floor. <laughs> guidance a little bit late here. Now Hakeem Ward. Hakeem wants the ball. I, mean, I don't think he's going to give this one up. I would doubt very much. He said no. I think, I think, no, he did pass it. Good job by Gladness. Defense. Yes, it was. There's Cobbs with four seconds on the shot clock. they got to get this up in a big hurry. They do. It didn't hit anything. They draw the foul on Patterson. Pretty good defensive job, really, almost all the way to the end of the 35. And the help came from Patterson, and Patterson did get somebody. Good help, Gray on the spin. Now here comes Patterson, and he, oh, he got leather, too. I mean, it was leather. If he got him, it was underneath. That's good team defense and good help. So Marvin Gray at the line, and gets it to go. First point of the second half for the USF Dons. And this has been an area here that Indiana has not scored against. The full court pressure has slowed the Hoosiers down. But then again, USF has not trapped off it either. So Indiana's been able to recover and run their offense and not turn it over. Let's take a look at the Hoosiers right now, moving without the ball so well. And they're going to get Lorian Russell, I believe, on a reach, and they might have gotten it from behind. 
Lewis makes things happen, too. I mean, he has good court recognition out there and saw right away that Patterson had a size advantage and able to put it down right on the sweet spot and let Patterson go to work. And with just four minutes of change played in the, first, in the second half, USF has four team fouls time uh, Indiana not looking at the sights but they're doing it to San Francisco it has been eight minutes and 40 seconds since the Don la Don's last field goal they cannot get it to fall 840 is a, is a long way to go they're 0 for 6 with seven turnovers in the last eight minutes so uh, certainly Phil Matthew says that we got to put a combination out there is going to make some things happen I want to welcome those of you on Fox Sports Rocky Mountain you've been watching the Jazz and the Hawks we got the Dons and the Hoosiers and the Hoosiers not only right back in it but uh, very much in this ball game a tie game at 34 they trailed at one time by I believe nine was the biggest deficit this really has not been a pro USF crowd up, up to now. I mean, uh, they could use a little home cooking here and put it in gear. That's a good read, good play by Ward. He's unselfish. A guy who was 8 out of 10, you'd think he'd get hungry and try to force that up, but he didn't. And I like what Gladness is doing. He's giving Ward different looks at the post. Fronting them, playing them on the side, doing some different things against him. And they're dropping down after that. This time, Ward with a good look, and he makes it. 18 for Ward, and USF back in front by two. See if they can go back to Patterson against Knees. Very successful at the start of each half with that matchup. See if they can dump it right back down. If he's trying to get position, and they're going to try to reverse the ball, try to get it inside to Andre Patterson. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Now five. And got him open from the corner. Sticks another for three. That's not a guy you want to leave open. I mean, that, that's actually a good opportunity situation for, for Indiana. USF played great defense, but they lost Guyton in the corner, and uh, when he squares it up, he's going to knock it down. And in the second half, 15 in the game for Guyton. Put Guyton on the same side of the floor as Andre Patterson, and uh, that would present some problems for the defense. Ward off the baseline too hard. Lewis alone for the rebound. And he'll, I bet he thought there's a good pass ahead. I mean, that's a great pass again. Again, Guyton just can't finish. He just can't. He rolls it around the rim. And Bob Knight said that his one area that this young guy's got to improve upon is finishing play. Good look by Lewis, wasn't it? Look ahead and hit the open man and make the easy play, but you got to knock it down. Here it is again, and you can see perfect pass from Lewis. Gladys just couldn't quite finish it. Carl Albert College in Oklahoma. He had very good junior college coaching. I mean, a, a guy that's been well-schooled and understands how to play. Now, Hakeem Ward, as you see Larry Richardson come in the game, Barry, and, and Andre Patterson sit down. Hakeem Ward now has three fouls. Well, that's a violation of USF. I mean, if he misses it, so there's not going to be a call. But Zara Campbell just stepped in there way too early, but once you make it, then you don't make the call. There's no violation. Stepping in front, Guyton knocked away from behind by the Don. Saved, but on the baseline was Zarek Campbell. It'll be Indiana ball again. It's been a disruptive Indiana defense in the second half. That's at least three steals in the midcourt area that I can recall that Indiana's been able to achieve in the second half. Now you think this. Akeem Ward's got three fouls. Now, Indiana's not asleep at the switch here. You, you can bet that whomever Hakeem Ward is guarding, that you will try to get him the ball. And it happens to be Gladness. See if they can reverse it and get it to Gladness at the low block. This is Greco. They drop it down for Richardson for the turnaround over knees. No, Campbell for the rebound. A little surprise. They didn't reverse it that time. You've got Hakeem with the three fouls. And Gladness... Uh, didn't really call for the ball, but I, you still look for Indiana to post him up the next time down. Isn't that a good job? Look, look at Gladness running inside, not allowing the ball, and another steal. Air pass that time. 
But you, what, what causes the errant pass? The errant pass is caused because they can't throw the ball inside to a key board. So now you take that out of your offense. What do you have left? You don't have a lot left. They want to throw it to Ward, but they can't. So Wilson's going to go one-on-one, -on -one, and then he's going to try to throw the ball to Campbell, and a good job by record is stepping away. What's forgotten in that whole sequence is how Gladness played Akeem Ward. Sixth team foul on USF. So the Dons digging themselves a pretty good sized hole here in the second half. Now let's see if they can bring it over now to Gladness. Let's see if they can just dribble the ball over to his side. Run him to the ball. Now give it to him low. Right here. Throwing the ball. Dighton with five seconds on the shot clock. The floater in the lane, it won't go. And Nees gets a hand on the rebound. Comes down to Sarah Campbell. And here comes the Don. Lauren Russell trying to push it. Now they'll wait for help. 20-second timeout called by Phil Matthews with 12-13 remaining. And the Indiana Hoosiers in front by three, 39-36. Well, the bad news for USF is they not played a particularly good second half. They've only scored four points so far in the second half, but the good news is they're only down three. <laughs> I mean, you, you're still in this thing. All you got to do is regroup it and get it going. And there is the manager of the year in the National League, That's Dusty Baker. He's hiding. Yeah, he is. Dusty's hiding. Wife, Melissa, long side. Melissa used to go to all the USF games, you know, years ago. She was a big fan. You didn't know that, did you? I did not know oh, Well, that's, that's a little good. tidbit of information for you. I like that. Dusty, great sports fan. Very supportive of all the teams here in the Bay Area. One of the, talked about Pete Newell being one of the great guys. I had occasion to spend a year with Dusty Baker, and uh, he's right up there on the great guy list. I think Dusty was Del Campo High School in Sacramento. And what am I talking about, Dusty Baker? Ted Robinson, of course. Uh, who is here tonight as our host is uh, the voice of the San Francisco Giants. And, uh, talk to him about Dusty. You want to know what a good guy is. We'll take a timeout. 11.54 remaining in the ballgame in Indiana. Leads USF 39-36. Indiana by three here at the Pete Newell Challenge. Don't forget Tuesday on Fox Sportsnet. Don't miss a behind-the-scenes look inside the NFL on NFL Total Access. And San Francisco coach Phil Matthews actually grew up together in Riverside, California. And Dusty Baker's a frequent visitor to San Francisco games to watch his old homeboy coach. Back to Barry and Dan. All right, thanks, Ted. Well, uh, his old homeboy uh, had to do some coaching in that last time. I think. I was Great finish by Patterson. Drew the foul on Knees. That's a big-time play right there. And a real tough cover, Barry, for Knees. I mean, Knees not used to a stepping outside and playing defense uh, on a big guy 15 feet from the goal. And, and a great play by Patterson. And what he did that a lot of young people can pick up on when you're playing against bigger people, use a fake once in a while. Get your defender in the air. When you do, you have an advantage. So Patterson tries to convert the three-point play and bangs it out the back. USF with seven turnovers in the second half, and Indiana with none, and therein tells a big part of the story. And the only thing the Hoosiers haven't done well in the second half is make free throws. What about everything else? Derek Campbell for three. Misses, and Ward got a hand on it, but Dighton controls it. And the other thing, the Indiana does a nice job is they get their guards back to rebound, so they're rebounding four or five guys. Did everything right except finish that time, but they'll get a second chance as Wrecker runs down the rebound. And they got Hakeem Ward this time on Patterson. Uh, nice oh, give oh. This time to Wrecker for oh. What a beautiful pass that time. He's doing it all himself. Oh, yes, he is. Just a sensational pass off the dribble. Yeah, they're, they're front and ward now. Now you got to give some help. Rotate over. Not, not fast enough. Good recognition that time by the Dons. Ward's got 20. Going to need some help from his friends, though. Five-point lead Indiana with the ball. They got a size advantage with Wrecker trying to post up the line. Russell. There he is. Yeah, 
one thing that Indiana really does well, well, one amongst many things, is they interior pass well. They look for each other. Guys are very unselfish, and they do hit the open player. Boy, they have really come out and dominated the second half. I mean, they have taken the game right away from the Dons. Rudy Ward's the only guy. He makes another one. I mean, he, he is single-handedly keeping USF in this game. Well, he has more than half their points. That's why I thought the Hoosiers might give a look at Ward. He's got the three fouls, forced him to play some defense near the goal, but I guess everything is going. You know, when you're rolling, just go ahead and keep it moving. Play the game. Richardson knocking that one down. Derek Campbell, double clutches. Lorian Russell for three, short. And Akeem Ward runs that one down. They'll start over with Cobbs up top. Get into a half-court game, it's, it's very difficult to handle Indiana. I mean, that, this is the tempo, definitely, that the Hoosiers want. He's gonna make another one? No, he didn't get that one down. It's a real upset. Only about the third shot he's missed all night. Cobbs ran the rebound down and drew the foul on side. Now, Guyton, a, a little overzealous going for the ball and made some contact, did not screen out. Again, probably a foul that, that you, you could let go, but you look at those team fouls, and you can bet Indiana's going to continue to try to get the ball inside and, and, and draw more, get to the line. So, seven team, only two against Indiana, and they could take some chances defensively. Cops, fall away. Yes. So Cobbs with five, and the Dons with back-to-back -back field goals for the first time in a while. And you said that uh, Ward needs some help. Two good defensive teams. I mean, you're seeing very solid man-to-man -man defense by both clubs. Really, the only shots you're getting are backdoor cuts. Guys overplaying. Record with an outside shot. See, I think that's a real confidence lift for him. That's the kind of goal he needs to look for. Indiana needs his perimeter shooting and his play to be a factor in the Big Ten. I'd want to come out of the game. He's uh, playing to the bench, pulling on his own boot. He's saying, get me out of here. He's a little bit gassed. Wrecker was a guy who knew what he wanted all along. He committed to Indiana when he was a sophomore in high school. Yeah, that's must be nice to get a great player say, okay, as a sophomore, I'm coming. I'm going, coach. Don't worry about it. Allie Thomas misses the three, and we got a foul, and will this be three shots? Yeah, three shots. It is three shots. And really, you're following the guy. Allie Thomas is a good perimeter shooter, but he has not shot the ball well tonight. In fact, has not had many opportunity shots. So certainly not a good play by Lewis. He's uh, really is... The only bad play he's made. <laughs> he really has been a, a a plus for Indiana in this game. That was actually the first shot attempt by Allen Thomas. Hey, look at look at those 12 plus points per game. So. I mean, this is a guy that, uh, although only a freshman, went here to St. Ignatius High School in San Francisco. I mean, he, he really contributes to, to USF's success, so they can ill afford to have him uh, not score. Well, the Don's perfect at the free throw line tonight, and that uh, has helped them. Thomas gets them both, and it is a 50 to 45 ball game. 7:41 remaining to be played as Indiana's come back from nine down to take a lead in the second half. Burned at the knee of this master. Pete has the best total grasp of the game of basketball of anybody uh, with whom I've ever talked. Offensively, defensively, going from one to the other, uh, attacking the zone, uh, uh, offensive principles. Uh, defensive rules. Well, their history goes back a long ways. They met actually here in San Francisco at the St. Francis Hotel when Pete, or rather uh, Bobby Knight, brought his Army team in to play in the Cable Car Classic. 
Yeah, I was, you know, the guy that introduced him was Stu Inman. And uh, Stu uh, coached at San Jose State with the, uh, was with the Portland Trailblazers for a while. And uh, they introdu he introduced both of them. And I remember when his Indiana team came in. You look at the numbers uh, there in, in the first half and the second half. And they sure have been uh, turned around quite a bit. Indiana at 67 in the second half. And the Dons went back to uh, 36. So obviously, uh, Indiana doing much better in the second half. Now they're going to have to face his own. And the Don's going to switch up, go 1-2-2 two, two zone, so Indiana recognizes and uh, has to run their stuff. They get it to Patterson on the block, he missed the turnaround. And it'll be USF ball. Not a bad shot by Patterson. Uh, Indiana happy with that little jump hook, didn't get the roll, but well executed and good recognition uh, on the changing defense. They like the matchup with Gladness on Ward. He really has done the best job of defending Hakeem Ward with his quickness and his ability to change the looks in there. He'll front, get up on the side. See, he, he really has done a very nice job of taking Ward out of the offense as much as you can. The team does have some scores, but not as easy as it was in the first half. They're really denying him the ball, but he's just getting his hands on the ball. Been tough. Now five seconds on the shot clock, and Wiltshire got to create something. He creates a finger roll that won't go. And I guess they're going to say that the shot clock ran out. The ball never hit the rim. <laughs> I kind of thought that the ball did hit the rim. I think that whoever was operating the clock should have just let it go. You look at the turnovers, and that I mean, it's almost amazing that USF is not down by more. I mean, 22 turnovers is a ton, and seven, uh, Indiana doing a great job of taking care of the basketball, and still, uh, the Hoosiers only lead by five. And no turnovers in the second half, and there's gladness went right around Marvin Gray. And I think USF wearing down a bit, too. I mean, they, they've lost some front-line players. Uh, Damon Cantrell's a big loss for USF. A good rebounder, knows how to play. Another guy that went to Ventura Junior College. That's a tough shot. See, the shots are getting a little tough. Gladness, what he's doing, he's just forcing them off the block, making that shot a little more difficult. Nice save by Jimenez, and oh, hold on this down and going into the first row. I'd say he ran it down. Did he save it? I don't no. think he did, actually. It was a great effort. <laughs> it was a great effort. That should be applauded by his coach. That's Michael Lewis. He had an up-and-down year as a freshman. Played on a Big Ten All-Star team that uh, toured Europe this summer, and I think it really helped him a lot. Now, he did that a lot better than I did yes, earlier. Yes, he did. Yeah, he Barry had some trouble climbing over one of those chairs, but... Of course, Lewis is a little younger, has better dexterity. Yes, that's true. He's a bit of a better jumper than you are, too. I, I think he recovers better than I do, too. I think I'm going to be on the DL. Oh, oh, here's the drive down the middle. And, and again, USF has resorted to a lot of one-on-one -on -one penetration. Cobb, that time, able to get in there and maneuver his body to draw the foul. But we've seen this a lot in the second half because Indiana's taken away a lot of that passing from guard to forward. And the guards have been forced to dribble drive to the goal and try to create opportunities. And as we'll leave for Indiana after a brief appearance. Well, you can see clearly Indiana needs production from Guyton, Patterson, good defense inside from Glasses if they're going to be successful. And also, Wrecker's a guy that has to make the open jumper when it is available. And this guy, Lewis, I mean, he just handles the rock, doesn't he? I and mean, he didn't make, look at that pass. How do you like it? That's a terrific. Just a beautiful read, again, by Michael Lewis. Well, you know, it, I read the scouting report on Michael Lewis, and what it said is, takes care of the basketball and can defend. And that's exactly what he has been. Now, he surprised me, really, that he passes and, and makes those decisions as well as he does. Again, ball was partially deflected, I thought, by Patterson. That was a high percentage shot for Wood. That'd be a good idea to wait for the big guy here. They drop it down for Gladness. Now he's working on Ward. He's fall away from the baseline. That won't go, but in the lane is Wrecker to get the rebound and the putback. Gladness has to recognize that his man has three fouls and not fade away from the basket, but go toward the goal. Wrecker again. Off 
opportunity jumper. Indiana with a masterful second half. I mean, let's give the Hoosiers a salute. Didn't play well in the first half, but they have made the adjustments and has taken over the game. Turned it around completely, and Indiana with its biggest lead leads it 56 to 47. We're coming back. The second half has been all Indiana. The Indiana contingent thrilled in making the trip to the Bay Area. And the Hoosiers have a commanding lead now here in game one. There is a second game of the Newell Challenge. And for some of you, the East Rocky Mountains region on the West Coast, game two of the Newell Challenge will feature California and Brigham Young. And that will come up after a special showing of NFL access. For everyone else along the Fox Sports Net and our affiliates, stay tuned after this game for Fox Sports News. All right, Ted, let's take another look at that play by Michael Lewis at the other end. This is just a textbook stuff. Now, Mike, Michael Lewis uh, had his head up. Now, watch where Michael Lewis is at. Look where he's looking. He's watching the floor, serving, does not look down at the ball, and then Gladness plays so well without the ball, gets it in there and finishes it up. So just a terrific play by Michael Lewis to recognize and read the defense. Holly Thomas launched a long three that would not go down. Indiana got the rebound. We had a 20-second timeout called by Bobby Knight. With 4.19 remaining, and Indiana now with what appears to be a comfortable nine-point lead. Now, you don't say that about every nine-point lead, but in this case, uh, Indiana's really taken charge of this game. And, and yesterday at practice, Barry, Bob Knight said, one of our problems is having solid possessions when we're ahead late in the game. We have not been able to do that. We haven't been able to put teams away, so we need to take care of the ball late. Well, a reminder that we're there when you're looking for the stories, all the sports inside and out. Fox Sports News Primetime, that's tonight. After the game, all the stories, all the time on Fox Sports News Primetime. Hoosiers with the ball and the lead by nine. The clock is their ally with 4.05 remaining. This is one of those solid possessions with the lead that uh, you can put teams away. You utilize the clock, run your motion, and try to get something solid. And they better do it in a hurry because the shot clock's winding. Not a bad shot. Lewis, yeah. Was there any doubt he was going to miss that the way he's played tonight? Of course, all lefties can shoot it anyway. I haven't seen too many left-handed guys that cannot shoot the ball. One of my series. I mean, if you're left-handed, you have to be a good shooter. One of them is sitting next to you, I'll tell you that, who cannot shoot the ball. Well, you, you need to be taught a little bit better on, on your rotation. Trying to add bad coaching. <laughs> Of course, you can dictate the tempo, and that's what you can ill afford to do. Well, Cox, with a beautiful, well, one way that you can get the other team back in the game is make those mid-court turnovers, and Cobbs with a great play to, to reach around and then get fouled. But Indiana, not with many team fouls. Here's the reach, Guide not looking, and Cobbs and gets it clean and then picks up the foul. But Indiana uh, does not have many team fouls in the second half. A lot of bounds that will go to USF. And they need to score in a hurry right now. 3.15 remaining in the ball game, and USF tries to drop it down for Ward, and that's just an errant pass from Zarek Campbell. It's been the story of USF second half. Well, Gladness has made it very difficult to throw the ball in there. He's come over on the side and, and really forced uh, the Don to go to another type of uh, adjustment, and uh, that time it just didn't work. That's record of the basket off the glass through the foul. Well, I'm going to say offense. All right, Wrecker is going to try to make something happen and make a play. Let's see if the defender was stationary. I thought he was. I, I think that's a good call. Wrecker did not slide over far enough to avoid the contact. And the defender looked like, to me, was in good position. But again, out of bounds, it will go. The play by Ali Thomas. Trying to get the ball to Ward, and Ward was cutting to the basket. Cobb threw it where Ward had been. 24th turnover for the Don. Yeah, that, that's been really the clearly the story of the game. The USF's inability to take care of the ball in any end and out with many turnovers. Uh, maybe only, what, two or three, if that, in the second half. Uh, they played a near perfect second yeah, Yes, they did. As I said, it probably was a very spirited halftime talk by Bob Knight because this team came out possessed. And they did it with their defense. And this guy right here, I thought I had a big half. Gladden, it has been unbelievable. He has been the man for Indiana in the second half at both ends of the floor. Gladys with 12 points in the ball game. He had four in the first half, but he has been brilliant in the second half. Cobbs sticks that. 
They need a lot more of that. Fox, the friend of the Hoosiers. And you're at the point now you just can you cannot let Indiana run the clock all the way down. I mean, San Francisco with no other opportunity but uh, other choice rather than the foul. Stop the clock. And Lewis gets that one. You talk about a guy that's got good rotation. You, you want to see good rotation on a free throw, watch Michael Lewis. 76% free throw shooter coming into this game. I mean, he's got his elbow in the right place, the left hand, the extension, perfect rotation on the ball. He's one of those guys that can shoot and say no rim. Yeah, I'm not going to hit the rim. If it hits the rim, it's no good. Thomas launches a long three and gets it. Well, that's been missing all night. That's the kind of play Ali Thomas is beginning to San Francisco, but not to see. And he'll look. I mean, he's a young guy coming right from high school to this level playing against Indiana. Now, now where was he a year ago? That's true. Playing against playing against Bella Francis. Playing against Bellarmine or St. Francis, but not Indiana. Five second count. See if they get it going. Huh? They'll use the clock and now Lewis launches a three. It won't go and knees runs it down to USA. Ten point ball game, a minute remaining. Great block that time. Again, it was Gladness just doing enough down low. And Lorraine Russell uh, taking it strong to the rack. And again, that guy Gladness, I mean, he has been all over. Gets the deflection. Only thing he did wrong was knock it out of bounds. Well, he steals it. Made up for it. Said, you know what? I knocked it out of bounds, but I'll steal it the next time. And the USF gets it back. Hands everywhere and no foul. Ali Thomas, long three again, misses. Indiana has to, well, Indiana's still going to look to play. But glad that you back this out. You don't need more points. Well, yeah, that's just an experience. You don't need any more points. All you need to do is run clock. Thomas, a long three again, misses that one. And record of the boys. All you got to do is wait if you're Indiana because you will get fouled. And the Ryan Russell fouls Guyton. night for Phil Matthews. His team played very well in the first half, only to see things uh, unravel in the second. Well, he's going to get MJ Nodilla back, who's, who's an all-conference guard, and, and let's hope Damon Cantrell, who's got mononucleosis, can come back, because th this is not a real deep team. I mean, I think it's a club that can go seven and, and be effective, but uh, he, he needs some guys that are productive. Nodilla's an all uh, league player and, and a good perimeter guy, and uh, he, he can ill afford to, to lose them. Uh, but Phil's done a nice job at USF. He's building each year. They're getting better and better. And I think a, a team that's going to be reckoned with in the in the uh, in the postseason tournament, they got a chance to win their conference. And I think the West Coast Conference may get two teams, and they're looking to get at large teams in the NCAA tournament this year. Derek Campbell for three. It's short. And Patterson with the rebound and the foul. Well, they call knees on that foul, and it puts Patterson at the line for two with 22.9 seconds left. Good win for Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers. Well, especially with the loss of Collier, you know, they, they felt they had to play a game. Let, let's come out and try to get a win, get back on track, and um, they were sluggish in the first half, but, but I really feel much of that was due to San Francisco's terrific defense. But the second half, they made those adjustments and they played the exceptional defense. They were able to open up the court, shot the ball well, and forced turnovers. And I think that was clearly the key for Indiana. They forced turnovers in the second half and converted. Good win for Indiana. They'll back it out. The Dons won't do anything about it. Excellent come from behind victory for Indiana. They were down nine in the first half, stayed with it, made terrific adjustments at halftime, and came back to win the game by a 65 to 52 count. And heroes were numerous, I think, for the Hoosiers. Michael Lewis took care of the basketball, dealt the basketball well, 
Guyton was big in the second half. Patterson came on in the second half after a fast start early in the ball game. And Gladness, as you said, maybe the MVP in the game on both ends of the floor. If Michael Lewis wasn't. I mean, he made, he made all kinds of plays. Pick your favorite MVP. You got your choice. Indiana wins it by 13. More to come after this. 52, they came from nine points down in the first half with a brilliant second half. They forced turnovers. They didn't make any turnovers. They shot a high percentage. They did everything right in the second half. Let's take you right now to our host for this evening, Ted Robinson. Ted? All right, Barry, indeed, USF outplayed Indiana in the first half, but they sure could not do it in the second half. And Bobby Knight settled on basically five guys that played almost the entire way in the second half for him, and Indiana blew the Dons off the court to win the game. Keying Indiana's defensive surge in the second half, our DiGiorno, pizza player of the game, guard A.J. Guyton. It was Guyton's defense out front that started really keyed. Indiana's change forced things to be very difficult for USF's guards. Guyton also added offense as he scored 17 points, the majority of those coming in the second half. So A.J. Guyton, the sophomore guard from Peoria, Illinois, he's Indiana's second half run, and he is our DiGiorno player of the game. So Indiana has won game one of the Pete Newell Challenge, a second half, much more the kind of half that Bob Knight would like one of his mentors, Pete Newell, to watch his team play. 65-52 for the Hoosiers. We'll be back with more on Fox Sports Net in a moment. After halftime, and they win it 65 52 over San Francisco. A reminder that there is another game in the Pete Newell Challenge coming up for many of you on Fox Sportsnet. The California Golden Sportsnet and our affiliates, we invite you to stay tuned after this. Moment. 